morning, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Renew Podcast. I am your host, Kristen Andre, and we are doing a first here today on Renew. As you will notice, I am in studio by myself, and this is this could be an interesting one because we're going to be exploring, we're going into my head. We're going to explore what's in my head for the next hour, and instead of having a co-host, You've got me all to yourself today, so we're going to have some fun. I hope those of you guys watching live will ask us some questions, because here's what we're talking about today. We're talking about the road to wherever it is you are, the journey that you take, because so many times we, you know, we just look at someone and we think, man, I want to be that or I want to do that, and we don't really think about the, the path they took to get there. And what's been interesting as my career has evolved and my business has grown, I get asked that all the time. People are like you, you always, it makes it, you make it look easy. And I'm like, oh, no, it wasn't. And I was asked in an interview, I did an interview for a magazine recently, and I was asked about the journey. I was asked if it was always easy. And my answer was like, are you kidding me? It definitely was not always easy. So that's what we're talking about today is the journey to wherever you are and what it took to get there. The bumps, the mistakes, the lessons, the pain, the heartbreak, all that stuff because I want to make sure that we're, you know, everyone listening to to our podcast and that have, we've had the opportunity to work with, it, we didn't come here by chance. It, it takes all of us a lot to grow and to grow through it. And I think, honestly, some of the tough things and the challenges that we encounter throughout our lives are what makes us us and are what taught us what we needed to know to really next level. And you guys know in, in my private practice and my coaching I do a ton of work with really helping people up level and get to the next stage in their business and in their life. But in order to do that, they've got to be willing to grow. And growth only comes when we step outside the comfort zone. So that's what we're diving into today. So we've got, I know we've got a lot of questions. We asked yesterday for people to submit some questions and we got a bunch of them. Some of them they've let me see, some of them they have not. So this should be interesting. We'll see which ones we can do. But let me give you a little bit of background. Um, a little bit of background on myself. For those of you guys that are just tuning in or, or, or haven't been watching, we hope you will stick with us because we have some fun on here. But my background is, is really interesting. I actually, my degree is in physical therapy and athletic training. So I was in sports medicine for a while, for about a decade. And what was interesting is I think I went into that field by accident. And the reason I say that is I kept getting injured. It was, I dislocated a leg, I had surgery on another one, I think I was just accident prone. So I was really intrigued by, you know, anatomy and the body and, and biomechanics and things like that. So I'm like, this is, sounds great. Well, I got into my career and I didn't love it. And then I hit a salary cap, I worked for, worked for the man and I hit a salary cap and was told, hey, you can't make any more money at the tender age of 29. So I changed careers ended up going into finance and you know it's a big jump from the medical field to finance but I learned so much along the way not just about myself but about business about different industries and ultimately about 12 years ago I decided to launch my own coaching and consulting firm and I have not looked back what's what's been so cool is I've been able throughout my life to really build my career into something that fit me and my strengths and my skills and you know the interview I was doing recently for that magazine was was asking me when they asked about my journey, what was difficult. One of the things I said is, you know, what what's been the best for me is I've truly embraced what I would call my my God given talents and strengths and skills. Like I have very intentionally over the past twenty years, definitely the past ten, even more so, I've dove into the things that I enjoy, that bring me energy, that move me closer to my goals, that I'm having fun with. Because one of my biggest regrets early in life and early in my career is I did all the things that they thought I was supposed to do, but not necessarily the things that fit me or my skills or my strengths. So I'm curious if, if a lot of you guys did the same thing. So I think, you know, what I'd love to dive into is just some questions and what you guys are seeing. I know Rob just said, you know, he could spend a month telling you about the the journey, right? The highs and the lows. Because what's interesting, Rob, to your point is we all spend so much time talking about the highs and that's what we tend to see in other people. We tend to look at them and like, oh, they did this and they did that. But I want to make sure that we're taking time to recognize the lows and the mistakes we made and the things we've been through that, that got us to where we are. 
you know, Laura said, tell me more about your career in Connecticut. Why'd you choose to go on your own? Okay. I like that. You got a lot of questions here. Okay. So here's, here's the thing. My career in Connecticut was when I was in finance and I was working with a firm, excellent firm. I still do a ton of work with a lot of their advisors. I do a lot of consulting work for them. Phenomenal company. And I'd been with the company. I'd continued to move up. I was asked to run an office in Connecticut, which I did. I, what was interesting, though, is talking about embracing challenges. When I went to visit Connecticut, yeah, I, y'all, I grew up in the South. We, we thought New England was a state. I didn't know there were, there were a bunch of, Connecticut was a small state. And when I first, started, I'd never been there before I went to interview and, and to look at the opportunity. Never been to Connecticut. This is going to make me sound really dumb. But I swear, I swear I'm very bright. But when I went to Connecticut to look, I'd never been there. And they're like, it has a beach. And I'm like, fantastic. I'm a beach girl. We're going to Connecticut. Y'all, in Connecticut, and I'm trying not to offend my Connecticut friends here because I know Tommy's listening. Um, he, and I know he's from Connecticut. The beaches in Connecticut are not beaches. They are bodies of water with brown sand. I mean, love it. Have fun. But I was, I was wooed by the beach, and it was not the kind of beach this Southern girl was used to. But anyway, I went to Connecticut. I, I built a practice. I had, you know, I had my firm. I had some great business partners there. But ultimately, you know, what was interesting, I went there for the opportunity. I went there because it was a stepping stone to where I wanted to get with that company. And after I was there probably about three or four years, it became very clear to me and it became very clear to some of the consultants and the outside coaches I had that that extra step I wanted to take probably was not as close as I thought it was, you know, for, for a bunch of reasons. But I didn't see my path continuing on the way I had mapped it out. I wanted to be a managing partner with the company. I didn't see that happening in the time frame that was going to work for me. So I ultimately made the decision to step down to launch my own firm. Now, the reason I did that, it was scary. I got to tell you, it was scary because you're, you're looking at a company that you love, the people that I love, the clients that I love, but I knew that it wasn't going to get me where I wanted to go ultimately. So I made the decision to step away and it was a scary decision. I had just had my third daughter. Um, so yeah, that's a great time to make a career move, right? Launch your own company right after you've had a baby. I literally had my third daughter in August. I launched my company in October. So August, let's see, August, September, October, let's count. Friends, that's two months, right? Two months after having my third child as the breadwinner in the family, I launched a new company. And so if you're talking about scary, it wasn't easy. It definitely wasn't easy. But everybody around me, the people that were truly my people and in my circle, they embraced it fully and they made sure that I was successful. Worked my booty off. But at the end of the day, it was because it was going to allow me to step in the direction I wanted to go. It was going to allow me to do the things that I wanted to do, to be able to use my gifts and my skills. And I got to work with the cool thing. I got to work with whoever I wanted. So that was, that was the start of my coaching consulting career. I also do a lot of speaking and writing, which we'll get to. But I know, Laura, you mentioned what made me decide to be a coach instead of a consultant. And I want to hit on that for a minute because I get this question a ton. And any of you guys listening that do coaching or consulting, there's a distinct difference. And I, Laura, I would say I don't, um, I don't, I'm not a coach instead of a consultant. I'm actually both. And it depends on what the needs of my clients or the prospects I'm working with are. And here's, let me give you the difference between a coach and a consultant. A consultant is going to come in and give you the strategies. They're going to come in and look at your business and say, here is what you need to do. Here are the steps you need to take. These are, consulting is phenomenal. I definitely, definitely do consulting with my clients, but I'm also an and, I'm a coach and consultant. In addition to the strategies, where a coach comes in is the coach is the one that's, and my friend Penny said it like this, and I love the way she said it. A coach is the one that is going to pull out of you the best that's in there. Like I love finding people that like, I, I can see potential in them that they may not even see in themselves. And that's so freaking fun for me, right? It's, it's the opportunity to get out there and find somebody and work with a client and say, I see what you can do and to help them get there. That's really, that's really what I do from a coaching and consulting standpoint. So it's, I think it's, I think it's awesome that you're able to do that. And I know, you know, Ingrid's back here and she's commenting for me here. So we'll, um, 
she's coming in and feeding me some questions, which is good. But all right, Ingrid, you just mentioned, you love that I've been focusing on strengths. And I think that is a big, big thing. And how do you figure out those strengths? You know, I, I think that's an interesting one because when I work with somebody privately, my private clients, I have an assessment I use with them that helps determine it. I personally am a big fan of StrengthsFinder, which is by the Gallup organization. That's the one I use. I love it. I think it's phenomenal. What, what StrengthsFinder does, and I've talked about it on previous episodes, is there's 34 strengths, quote unquote. And we, we have all of them, but we have them in various degrees. And what the assessment does is it figures out what you're innately good at. What are the things that you just naturally do? And, you know, there's, they tell you their top, they tell you your top five. When I first took this decades ago, it, it only told you your five. Now it tells you all 34 in order. So not only do I know what my strengths are, I know what my, we won't call them weaknesses because I don't like talking about weaknesses. I know what I'm not as strong in. Like, for example, one of my top five is communication. Another one of my top five is significance, which when I heard that, I was like, that sounds kind of bougie. I didn't really like that one, right? But the, what it meant by significance was I wanted to have a greater impact, which is part of why I stepped out and launched my own firm is when, and my old managing partner, Phil, told me this when I stepped down, he's like, I feel like you can have such a larger impact and will have such a larger impact on the world outside of this office. So for me, significant means not being important, not being, you know, in lights or anything. It just means having a significant impact on others. And communication, both written and oral, allow, I do a lot of speaking, I do a lot of writing. Those, you know, significance and communication combined, that's what I'm doing now. I get the opportunity to use my strengths, which is why I have so much fun doing what I do. You know, my last weekend was Easter and my dad was in town and he told me that he goes, I just love that you truly, truly enjoy what you get to do every day. I'm like, for sure. Because if you don't, why are you doing it? Why are you doing it? Amy just commented and said, she's a woo. Woo is another strength. Woo stands for winning others over. That means winning, excuse me, winning others over. That means you just kind of, you got that attraction power. Woos, Amy, make great recruiters. Like anytime I was hiring a recruiter for my business, uh, if they had woo, I'm like, this is golden, right? But what's interesting is everybody has different strengths. One of my lowest, you guys are going to love this. Do not hold this against me for those of you guys listening. And for those of you guys listening that know me personally, one of my lowest out of the 34, this is awful, is empathy, right? And, and I'm thinking, this is terrible. My kids are like, yep. But it's the reason empathy is so low for me is it's not that I don't have it, because I can, <coughs> excuse me, but a part of it is that I, I'm a big believer in taking ownership of your own life. And if you're not willing to do that, and if you're not proactively doing things to do that, my level of empathy and patience for you goes, I'm going to say down, but it really just goes out the window. I don't have any. So I think that's why that struck so low for me. So what, you know, what's interesting is I would be a terrible, terrible person that would have to deal with, you know, people, lazy people. I can't do it. I just can't do it. So if there's a career dealing with lazy people, I am not equipped for that. But it's, it's been interesting to kind of see the strengths and see how they play out and everything. So, all right, we'll see. We've got a couple questions and you guys can feed them to me. Amy just said, I'm curious, do you have a business role model, someone you've admired and or thought, I want to do that. I can't do that. I have, Amy, and, and I'll go through a few. I've had several, and they've changed over the years, which is interesting. And I think part of my business, as it evolves, I kind of keep evolving. I will say years ago, and those of you guys that have been following us know this, I was a huge Rachel Hollis fan. Um, she lost a little bit with me. like from a, I wouldn't say she was a business mentor, but I loved how authentic she was. I loved how genuine she was. Um, until she wrote that book, I didn't see that coming and published it the week she, or close to the time she announced her divorce. It kind of lost the authenticity, but I'd say from a business standpoint, there are a few, there are a few that I absolutely love. Um, I really like Mel Robbins. If you guys follow her at all, 
Um, I've had the opportunity to see her speak years ago. I mean, it's, gosh, probably 15 years ago now. I don't even remember. But she's phenomenal, truly authentic. She's very direct. She gets in with everything. I think she is excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, I have followed uh, Tony Robbins. You know, Max Husband's done a lot of work work with him over the years um, as part of his team. And I've I've had an opportunity to follow him. And he is – he. He's intense, right? He's a big personality, but he's so good and so genuine at what he does. And from a business standpoint, I tend to look at people that are um, in similar fields. Because, you know, we all have the Tonys, the Mel's, the big people of the world. But I tend to look at people who are in a similar role as me. And I would say one of mine, and I've had him on the show before, is a personal friend of mine, Ben Newman. Um, Ben's a performance coach, and he works with a lot of pro athletes, a lot of people, a lot of people I don't, a lot of the, he has a lot of guys that he works with. I think he is absolutely phenomenal, and I've truly enjoyed, I've known him. We were the same firm together. We launched our practices about the same time. I've just enjoyed watching him grow and scale, and knowing him as a person, um, and knowing, you know, how he is with his family and how he is with his clients, um, that, that would probably be one of them. And then Tommy, Tommy, of course, just commented and said, Gary V. Of course, Gary V. We can't forget very, Gary Vaynerchuk. Um, from a business standpoint and a uh, visionary standpoint, I do love me some Gary Vaynerchuk. T- Tommy, that was a good one. So it, um, Gary Vaynerchuk, if you're not following him. He, he tells it like it is, which you guys know I say that about myself all the time. I am, you are not going to be lacking in wondering what I'm thinking about you if you're, if you're working with me or if you know me. But um, Gary does it with a lot more, he's a lot more colorful. How about that? He, he, he's not a Southern boy. He cusses a lot more than I do. But Gary V, tell me that's a great point. That was really, really good. So. All right. So um, Dan, Su- oh, Rob mentioned Dan Sullivan. Dan Sullivan, yeah, is was one the entrepreneur coach. He's worked with Tony before. I think that's a really, really good one. Dan Sullivan's a big, big coach in there in the strategic coach world, so it's great. I think there's so many of them that we're able to, to work with and do or anything like that. Amy had a good question, too. Do you miss any part of your old work life? I think that's a great question question especially for people who've launched on their own or who you know right now after the pandemic so many of us have side hustles and gigs and other companies we're starting that we leave our work life if you will um yeah there are amy parts of it that i miss uh first well there's two things one i think immediately i missed um i'd been entrepreneurial for a while but i think when i first left corporate I miss the paycheck. Paychecks were good, right? But now I will say if you can brave starting your business and launching your business, if you can brave those initial months or years or weeks, whatever it takes you to get past not having that regular check, the checks get bigger. I will tell you, if you pour your heart and soul into building your business, that goes away. So I think that's what I missed at first. The other thing I think I missed was, um, and I've remedied this, the other thing I missed was just the connections. You know, if you've left a corporate environment or left a work situation, a, a traditional work situation, you had friends, you had people you worked with, you had all these folks that were kind of your people. And I feel like for probably the first five to six years of my owning my own consulting and coaching practice and speaking and writing so much of that is by myself I'm meeting with my clients over the phone I'm working out of my home I'm traveling to speaking events I'm holed up in my room writing a book whatever it is I miss the connections Amy I think that was the biggest one so what I did to remedy that is I've forged my own connections I've met my new people and you you know because Amy's a member of this we launched our Renew community because that was what I was missing, Amy. That was where I wanted people. I wanted to connect and build community with people that I didn't have the opportunity to do. So that's, that's probably what I miss the most. So I would say if you're missing those same things, do something about them. You know, I'm a big believer, quit complaining. Like if it, if it's something you don't, you're not happy with, change it, change it. So I think that gives us the opportunity. So yeah, Amy said she missed the camaraderie and the connections. Oh, conventions. Yeah. Well, that, that went away the last couple of years, but that's, that's why, I mean, you've been to our events, Amy. That's why we do our Renew Community events because we get to connect in real life and hug on people and love on people and support their businesses. And I truly think, we've devoted entire episodes to this, I truly think so many people in this world are craving connection. And I don't mean busyness or you're just talking to people. I mean true, deep connections. I um, went to a networking event last week 
And it there were some people there that were great, and there were some people there that were just for business. And I like connection. I like authenticity. I don't. I like to go deep with people. So I think that's kind of that's kind of the opportunity. Let's see. All right, Rob's commenting. The worst trait of entrepreneurs: we beat ourselves up if we don't meet our goals. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Good one. I like. I agree with you. I agree with you because we're so hard on ourselves as entrepreneurs and we want to just get, we want to set a goal. We want to hit it. We want to move on. And that's where the challenges come in because I will say in the last, I launched my firm in 2009, October, 2009. So we're coming up on, we're 12 and a half years, come up on 13 years and look at 13. But I, I did at the beginning beat myself up if I didn't grow as fast or scale as fast or do it the way, you know, my friends were really rapidly, their, their consulting businesses were like, they're hitting a million dollars and they're doing this and they're doing that. And I wanted to do it exactly the way they, they did it at the exact same, same time frame. And that's not how it's meant to be. And I think to your point, Rob, we've got to quit as entrepreneurs beating ourselves up. We've got to quit doing that as people. Honestly, our journey is different. Our path is different. Our destination is different. And if we're holding ourselves to the standards of somebody else, or if we're beating ourselves up when we miss a goal, we all miss a goal. I want you guys to drop a comment if you have not missed a goal. Like we, we all do. I miss them all the time, right? But you course correct and you get back on path and you get back on track to what it is you really are going after. You know, my biggest goal, we talked about strengths earlier. I want to make an impact. I want to make a difference in my clients' lives and my in, in my clients' businesses. That's my goal. You know, the revenue goals, the the vacation goals, the financial goals, all that, those are separate. You know, the dropping 10 pound goals, those are separate. We all miss goals and we all make goals. And the beauty is in the journey. The beauty is in what we do to hit those, the people we meet along the way, the impact we can make along the way. So I'm going to let Ingrid, you can jump in if I'm seeing some because I'm trying to keep up with the quote. We got rapid fire going here. Laura says, what is your biggest hope for the Renew community and what do you wish new business owners knew and understood at the beginning of their entrepreneur entrepreneurship journey? Okay, so I'm going to take the second one first. What I wish business owners understood is two things. Can I, can I give two? I'm going to give two answers because it's my show and I'm doing it by myself. So I'm going to give two answers. The first thing I wish they understood is that their path is up to them. That just because someone else did it a certain way or someone else succeeded a certain way doesn't mean that's how they have to do it. The first thing I want you to know is entrepreneurs, your path is up to you. The second thing I want you to know is you are going to fail and you're going to mess up and that is fantastic. I want you to fail. I want you to mess up. I want you to fail hard. I want you to fail often because that is what's really going to get you to the next level. I have made horrible financial decisions. I have made awful business deals. I have gotten my butt chewed out. I've gotten, I, you know, all the bad things. Like I, I've lost money. I've owed money. I've, I've trusted the wrong people. I've entered into business ventures with people that I'm like, what the heck was I thinking? Right. We all make those mistakes and that's where you learn. And I will say, you know, into my career where I am, had I not had those mistakes, I wouldn't be on the trajectory that I'm on. And that's not being braggadocious or anything. It's just being honest. I mean, we have to fail. So my biggest hope for entrepreneurs and the thing I hope they recognize the most is, is that is the failing piece. And, um, let's see the first question. What was the first part of her question? The community? Yeah, what's your hope for the community? Here's my hope for the Renew community. And for those of you guys, let me back up and, and explain it a little bit for those of you guys that are just tuning in or aren't familiar. We launched the community during the pandemic. And the Renew community is extension of my private practice and extension of the podcast. It is a way to bring everybody together for two purposes. One is personal, professional, and financial development. We have an online platform that has, all, you have access to everything we have all of our courses, all of our resources, everything. So all of our Renew community members have all the strategies at their fingertips. So that was the first purpose of it, was to get that information, that content, that business development opportunities in the hands of people who didn't have it otherwise. So my private clients all have access to all my stuff anyway. That's just how I roll. Um, but a lot of times people aren't ready for a private coach or financially they can't afford it. So I wanted to bring that to everyone where there is, there is no one that cannot afford membership in this. We priced it so 
so abundant where we can get everybody in. So that was the first purpose was to get the tools in everybody's hand. But the second purpose and the most, probably to me the most important and what our members are telling us are the most important is the community. I want it to be community. It's not networking. I get people laugh at me because I, I will fuss at them if they call it a networking meeting because it's not. Um, is to build community. It's to bring together like-minded people who are going to be your people. These are, if you don't have a tribe, if you don't have a, a group of people who are fighting for you the whole time, we want to give that. That's why we built it is we want to provide that, that type of community for everyone. So that's really, that's really what we did. Oh, I see a question from Mitch. Hello, Mitch. If I could do it all over, oh wait, he says if he could do it all over again, he would have never worked for anyone but him. Oh, that's an interesting perspective. And um, I don't know. I don't know. Mitch, I could see that with you. And, and I know you've been in business and have gone out on your own and done all kind of different stuff over. And Mitch's background is finance as well. I think I still would have worked for people. And, and here's why. Because it makes me appreciate what I have. I probably wouldn't have done it as long. I will say that. Um, what not scares me, but we have so many of the younger people immediately launching a business, immediately immediately going into, you know, their own company. And I love that. But I do feel like at some point we need to to work for the man. We need to do, we need to be part of a corporate structure where we realize we're not in charge. Because if we don't have that, if we've never had that experience, we're, we're more likely to take for granted what we have in running our own business. I mean, we definitely need people who are filling roles and doing that, which is why I, you know, I personally think a lot of these um, trade opportunities and things like that, that have seemed to go by the wayside is a phenomenal opportunity for a lot of young people that don't want to own their own business. And I think if you are going to be an entrepreneur, run your own type of company or business, you've got to, it's a set personality. You have to know that you have to be willing to take risk. You have to be willing to, you know, have months or days or weeks where you're like, I didn't, I didn't make any money. I mean, that happens for all of us in the early stages, most of us. We can control it a lot, but I think you've got to be willing to take some risks that maybe other people aren't willing to take. But yeah, Mitch, I'd probably, I think I'd still, I think I'd still work for somebody, but I would, I would cut the strings earlier for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Amy just said every experience is an experience that helps us become who we are today. I agree with that. And I will say, I want to get into this for a minute because I've talked about it on prior episodes, I talked about it in You're Not For Everyone, our, my last book. It's, I call it the internal GPS. Because to your point, Amy, we all have experience that, that shape us and mold us. And we need those experiences. And at the same time, some of us could learn those experiences a bit sooner, right? Don't you think? I'm of the belief that, that God will keep giving us the same lesson over and over and over until we learn what we need to learn, until we take from it what we need to take from it, and until we implement and change the things that need to be changed. We're going to continue getting those lessons, and some of those are hard lessons. And the internal GPS is that little pit in your stomach that tells you when something's off, when something's not right. And it's spot on. It's usually spot on. And I will say without question or without, you know, reserve every poor decision I made in my life, financially, um, business, you know, professionally, relationally, dating. I mean, all the bad decisions I've made in my life, I had a gut feel that I was making the wrong decision. There was something in the pit of my stomach. It's like, mm. so if you have a feeling about something, a business deal, a client, um, a, a, a spouse, whatever. If you have the gut feel, you're probably right. And I feel like in business, we do that a little bit personally. I used to, I listened to it in business. I wasn't listening to it personally. A lot of people listen to that personally. They'll cut off people that they, you know, toxic is a big buzzword right now. People cut off toxic people all the time in their personal relationships, right? Do it in your business. All of us have that internal GPS that will guide us in the direction that we need to be if we listen to it, if we truly take a minute and listen to all the things it's trying to tell us. So, okay. All right, let's see. Laura's got on the question, what's the biggest piece of advice you would give to people who are working for a corporation or who are a part of a team? What's the most important part of being a team? Okay, so for those of you guys that are listening that or are corporate and part of a team, well, first, find a team. Find people that you can work with. If you're working for a corporation, it is 
as critical, maybe even more so that you truly understand you and your strengths and what you bring to the table. And I don't mean in a way that you can brag about what you've done. I mean, in a way that you're able to say, here's what I'm really good at. These are the types of things that I enjoy. And like I tell my clients all the time, if it's not bringing you joy or moving you closer to your goals, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't say it. Don't eat it. Don't drink it. Don't buy it. Don't marry it. None of that, right? Same thing with a corporation. If you're working for a corporation, what is it that's exciting you? What about your role do you truly enjoy? Because bosses, I've been a boss. I get this. I've worked in corporate. I've been a boss in corporate. They want people who are engaged and excited. So if you are working in a position where you've got, you're not enjoying it, have a conversation with the person you report to and say, hey, I'd really like to do this. Now that takes knowing yourself and it takes understanding what you bring to the table, what your gifts are. But the more you can do that, the better off you're going to be. And you can make your corporate job a lot more fun. I mean, we need, cor- we need people in corporate. Everybody can't be an entrepreneur. As cool as it would be, we, we can't, it's not going to survive that way. We need people that work in trades. We need people that work for corporations and we need entrepreneurs. So you can succeed wherever that is. I coach a number of senior level executives, a lot of female executives, um, and, and they do. That's what they're trying to figure out with their, with themselves and their role and with the people that report to them is how can I pull out the best in everyone? So if you're part of a team in corporate or if you're managing a team, my biggest piece of advice is know your strengths and know the strengths and the goals of every single person on your team and work collectively to pull those out and to kind of let them mesh together. Figure out how you guys can work collectively together to make all the good stuff happen. So that's, that's that one. I, I love that. These are fun. I'm having fun. You guys, are, you guys got some good questions today. I like it. Because, you know, really all, all this boils down to is it, it's just stepping out. It's, it's figuring out what the journey is and enjoying the journey. And I'm not saying, you know, I'm a big goal person. I'm, I'm a strategist for Pete's sake. I've got to be a big goal person. But at the end of the day, it's really not about the goal. Because you know what happens when you hit a goal? You know, it's really funny when I, when I work with a lot of my clients, they hit these big goals and I'll, I'll, I'll make them pause. I'm like, tell me, tell me how you're feeling. I don't know. Well, what do you, tell me what you're thinking. Well, I got I'm thinking about what, you know, what we're going to do next. Stop. Enjoy the moment. Like we, we, we are such a goal driven society, which I love, but we're not taking enough time, I think as people to enjoy the journey. Cause at the end of the day, and I've said this phrase before and I'm going to say it again. So this is where y'all need to pay attention because I'm going to coin this phrase at the end of the day, we're all taking a big dirt nap, right? We did a, we did an episode a while back. Ingrid, you probably remember that we did. We called it the dirt nap. It, you know, it's, we're all taking a dirt nap at the end, right? So no matter how many goals you hit, no matter how many plaques you have on your wall or ribbons you have or anything like that, at the end of the day, what matters is how you enjoyed the journey, how you lived out your strengths and how you engaged and were kind and helpful and loving to the people around you. That's, that's really what matters. Now, I'm all for making a ton of money while you do that, but that's where everything blends together. If you can use your strengths to, to impact the world, if you can use your strengths to help people, to move people along, to make things better, that's, that's what counts. And then when you do take that dirt nap at the end, it's the journey, not the check marks you hit along the way. Oh. Let's see. All right. Rob said again, Proctor told him if he could figure out how to achieve his goals, his goals are too small and that they're all about him. You have to, you have to have idea. Well, you have no idea how to achieve them. They're huge. I like that because here's the, if you're going to set goals and I, I heard this from a coach when I did my coaching certification, one of the, the, the guys that coached us, um, he, he always said people set goals in three ways. And, you know, it's, it's different because, Rob, I think I'm more like you. As if I'm setting a goal, I want a big goal, right? And, but I think we need to understand that there's, that's only a third of it. Some people set goals. There's really three ways. The first one is like that. The first one is I'm going to set a goal so big that I have to stretch, stretch, stretch to achieve it. And that's how I do. That's how I tend to set goals. A lot of of people do. But there's two other ways to set goals. The second group set goals that are, I'm going to set it exactly where I think I'm going to hit because I I have to hit it, right? And then the third group of people, they set their goals so low that they know they'll blow by them, right? 
And it's important to understand if you're working with somebody, especially as a coach, it's very important to understand how they set goals. Like I know I'm going to set pie in the sky goals and I'm going to shoot for the moon and you know, you miss it, you land amongst the stars, right? That's a common quote. A lot of people gravitate to that, but it's equally as important to remember that some people, and I have a few clients like this, that they are so precise in their goal setting. They set a goal that they will hit like spot on, but they are all in and driven where the people that are setting the big goals, they may hit them, they may not, and they may be okay. So it's important to understand if you're talking with somebody, if you're working with somebody, if you're coaching someone, know how they work, how they tick and what, you know, how they set their goals. Because I will tell you, with, with my private coaching clients, I don't have any of them that are the same. They all approach things different. They look at things different and all that. The main thing is figuring out and understanding how, how you set them and how you need to work. I mean, that's if, from a coaching perspective, that is one of my, one of my other strengths on the Strengths Finder was called Maximizer. And Maximizer is kind of the good to great. You see the good in people and you want to make it better. You don't to tolerate mediocrity or, or lack of performance, but if you'll find the good stuff and you'll want to make it even better. So with Maximizer, what I get the opportunity to do is pull that out. So if you struggle in that area, myself or another coach, let us help you. That's what we're here for because all of us have such great stuff inside of us that can be pulled out. And it is fun. Like it is fun. Every single one of the coaches, I'm in a, a study group with a group of other coaches and consultants. And we, we lo like, we love it. It is more fun for me to see my clients hit their goals than it is for me. That's just how I'm wired, which is probably why I'm a coach and consultant. Right. But it's, there's an opportunity to use your strengths and gifts. And it's frustrating for me to see when people don't do that. So y'all, if you're listening and you're like, I want to do this, I need to do this, I feel like doing that, do it, go for it. But surround yourself with coaches, professionals, people, friends, a community, surround yourself with people that can help you with that and are as excited for you as you are. That's what, you know, when we were talking about the Renew community earlier, that's what's so fun about that is genuinely everyone is excited. There's no competition. Like we, some of my closest friends in business do exactly the same thing I do. And we have zero competition with each other. What's interesting is some of my best coaching clients have been referrals from other coaches and that could have coached them themselves, but will call me and I've done the same thing for them. They'll call and say, Hey, Chris, I think this is, this person will be a better fit with you. Whether it's personality style, maybe they're sassy like I am, maybe they're a little Southern. I don't know. But find the people that you can surround yourself with because at the end of the day, this is, this is what this is about. It's about the journey. It's about making sure that you're along, you've got the right people along for the ride. So think, think about it this way. If you're taking a cross-country road trip, I, haven't, I think that'd be fun. I used to do that in college. Did anybody else do that in college? Like, did you guys take trips and, you know, just drive? Now, now you can, Ingrid's shaking her head, no, no. Ingrid, we got to get you out a little bit more. But we've got, you know, the, the cross-country road trips are fun, right? But if you're going to take a cross-country road trip, are you going to jump in a car to drive from Georgia to California with somebody who's negative, with somebody who is belittling your aspirations, with somebody who is just going to say, oh, Kristen, I don't know if you should do that. I don't know if you could do that. It's, you don't want the woe is me. You're going to let them out at the first stop. They are going to be out of the car before you get to the Alabama border, right? But if you think about it, if you think about your business, if you think about your life as a journey, too many of us are doing that. Too many of us are letting people in the car that we should let out at the Alabama border, right? So if we're driving to California, the longer those people are with you on your journey, the more taxing and grueling that journey is going to be. And by the time you get to your destination, if you get to your destination and aren't stopped for murder along the way, right? If you make it to your destination, you're worn out. You're exhausted. You've depleted everything you had. Business and life is exactly the same way. It's exactly the same way. It is a journey. So my advice to you guys all is look at the people that you're letting in your car. Or, you know, you guys have seen, for those of you guys have tuned in for a while, you've seen my daughter Mia co-host with me a few times. Mia still, to this day, her dream car is a VW bus. 
Not the new, not the new fancy bougie one that's coming out. It is the classic 1960 some odd. V. So do not let the people in your VW bus to drive cross country with you if they're not pulling the same weight, if they're not engaged and excited and doing all the fun things you want them to do. Because it's, it's a journey, my friends. I'd love your thoughts. I mean, I'd love to hear your comments because I feel like, I feel like so many of us, we miss that piece. You know, I've talked a lot about kindness on the show and I've talked a lot about that. I'm not saying that you have to cut people off and be mean and say, you can't get in my van. Well, you probably shouldn't be inviting people into your van anyway. These days you might get arrested, but you know, you've got to look at your circle. And, you know, I, I say over and over again, I'll say it to the day I die. I, my circle's small and it's very intentional, uh, personally and professionally. And, you know, I always talk about personal, professional, and financial. They all mold together. They really, really do. So some of my best clients are some of my closest friends and, and vice versa. And I personally, I only do business with people I'm friends with. That's kind of just how I work. I think you support your people, you go all in with them, and you expect the same in return. Um, and some people do that and some people don't. But at the end of the day, it's about figuring out what to do, how you can how you can progress through this journey called life and who you want to have along along for the ride. So, Inger, do we have any other questions coming in? Anything you can think of? We got some rolling in today. We did have a question about why you started the podcast and why you rebranded it as Renew. Okay, that's a good question. So for those, for those of you guys new to the show, um, we are coming up, actually, is this month on five years. That's a long time, right? We were podcasting before podcasts. We were pre-pandemic podcasts. We'd been on the air a few years, and we've changed it a lot over the years. So when we launched it, we were originally called No Limits because I was like, that sounds fun. I don't know why I picked that. But, you know, when a couple years ago we rebranded to Renew, and it was, it, it was before the pandemic, though, wasn't it? Inger, I think it was right before the pandemic. Yeah. And it was... We, we started thinking, so we, we didn't even know we were going to have to renew at that point, but it, the timing was impeccable. Maybe I was foreshadowing. But the reason we, we launched it originally five years ago is I, the reason I launched it was that I wanted to be able to bring light to other people's businesses. I wanted to showcase people. I wanted to talk about their business. I wanted to have a platform to talk about the struggles, the challenges, all the things we've been mentioning and discussing today. But what was interesting is after a few years... I figured out very quickly that I wasn't doing that. Like all the things I set out to do on the podcast, I wasn't doing. What it was happening is I was bringing in guests and I was interviewing them and we would talk about their business, but it ended up being more of a commercial for their business than it ended up being discussing their journey. And not that that's bad. I certainly wanted to promote their business, but I made the decision a couple of years ago when we rebranded to Renew that I was only going to do co-host as opposed to guest. Because what's interesting is even, you know, with, with our podcast, I get pitched a ton. I get emails, like multiple emails a week, like this person should be a great guest. This person would be a guest. And I'm sure they would be a great guest, but it would take us away from my message. So I rebranded Renew. We renewed the podcast and I rebranded it so we could help everyone renew. So my goal with the show, with our Renew community, with all of our content online, is that we're helping people renew themselves personally, professionally, and financially. And our tagline is reclaim your life without losing your edge. And that's really important. Reclaim your life without losing your edge. Because so many of us get watered down as we go through life. We get watered down as we build our business, as we grow our families, as we cultivate our circle of friends. We water ourselves down. And I wanted people to have the tools and the resources and the discussions that allow them to reclaim all the things that were them, but without losing their edge. Because I love the edge. That's where the fun stuff happens. I love the sassy, the salty, the the fun, the engaging, that's cool. And I want you guys to keep being able to do that and to keep being able to reclaim your life without losing your edge because that is what makes this whole journey worth it and it's what makes this whole, whole, whole journey fun. I like it. It's fun. Don't you think it's fun? Inger, do you think it's fun? Yeah, I love it. Inger's having fun in there. She's yeah. in the control room. Got it. Awesome. Well, any more, do we have any more questions rolling in? Because I think that's a, we had a good discussion. We're going to have to do this again. 
Yeah, definitely. I think that was about all the questions for today, but Thanks. lots of great feedback in I, the comments. I love it. I lo yeah, thank you guys for tuning in live, and we'll we'll probably do this again. I have a feeling we're going to do this again because I'm 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 already guessing that Ingrid and Laura's heads are rolling and and going. Yes, we're gonna we're gonna play more. So get your questions ready. We'll be doing episode two pretty soon, I'm sure. But until then, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Please take what we said into, into account and really enjoy your journey. If you're not enjoying your journey, reach out to us. That's what we're here for. We're going to help you reclaim your life without losing your edge. So until next week, make it a great one and we will see you very soon. Bye.